What's up, what's up, everybody? Before we start this episode, I want to announce some shows. West Coast, we are coming. California, July 28th, Los Angeles. July 29th, Santa Ana. July 30th, Reno, Nevada. July 31st, Sacramento. I think it's sold out, but listen, get those tickets. We are coming. We're going to have a blast. And um, the Smoking Word podcast is always brought to you by CasaTheRock.com. That's my merch store. Again, unless you live under a rock and you don't know what time it is, everything is done in-house by your boy. So if you want to support me, support the show. Um, CasaTheRock.com is the spot. All T-shirts are $21. And whatever you can't find here, and if you want that international shipping, go to CasaTheRock.eu. So CasaTheRock.com, U.S. only. And CasaTheRock.eu for the rest of the planet. What up, Theo? And again, um, anything, Madball, anything, Casa the Rock, that's the spot to find it. And a big, big shout out to my Patreon family. We are growing every day, and I can't thank you enough because of you. Smoking Word TV is coming out even better than we expected. As you can see, if you're a part of the Patreon family, you're seeing all the exclusive stuff we're doing. We started to drop it daily. Well, weekly, really. But um, patreon.com slash the smoking word is the spot. Dinosaurs, one more time. Patreon.com slash the smoking word podcast. That's how you invest in the smoking word podcast. People always hear, hit me up and ask me, hey, how could I, you know, um, give in? How could I throw something up to the show? You know, I want to support the show. Well, you could cop some merch. Or you could go to the patreon.com slash the smoking word. There's four tiers of exclusive video footage, all types of stuff. You get to take the ride along with me and the rest of the dudes in the band on stuff that nobody else gets. But that's what you get for helping build the show. One love to my whole Patreon family out there. You know who you are. We're doing this shit. And you can follow me at Hoya Rock 357 on Instagram. For everything Madball, everything Casa the Rock, everything Smoking Word. And add, right now, everybody needs to go to the Smoking Word podcast on Instagram and add your boy. Any questions, any shout outs, any new bands, any new music, don't send it to me. Send it there. The Smoking Word podcast on Instagram. Add us, spread the word, and all that good stuff. Let me say that again. For everybody out there, F- following us on YouTube. We finally are dropping that content. YouTube.com slash Smoking Word TV. Go add us and subscribe right now. We are dropping that fire and you could thank the Patreon family one more time for that. But again, shout out to all my Patreon family members. Shout out to everybody who's been subscribing. Shout out to everybody who's been hitting me up on the DMs telling me they love the show, you know, or just, you know, Showing love. Trust me, that shit means a lot. That shit keeps me going. You know, we do this shit for the culture. We ain't doing it for the money because there is no money in it. But um, we love what we do. We love spreading the word. We want to see this culture. We, this hardcore thing of ours is so beautiful. Everybody deserves it. But um, not everybody's worthy. But everybody should feel this feeling once in their life. So, again, shout out to everybody who's been supporting the show, spreading it. Spreading the word, subscribing, uh, emailing, all that good stuff. Big shout out to Shane Smith and Francisco Bracamonte. And again, what can I say? Shout out to Bubs College and freaking, I can't say it enough. I'm feeling strong. That's part of my freaking Hoya Rock power punch every morning. So again, go shout out to Bubs if you want your, your skin looking good and those joints powerful like your boy. And shout out to the fam at Hella Hella Hot Sauce. We are coming soon. We who I, who wants to see more of that New York hardcore hot sauce out there? I do. So look out for that Mad Ball hot sauce coming soon. And again, super big shout out to my boys at the Cali Care Group for keeping people like me who could go insane in the brain 
keeping me very sane. Let's just keep it like that. Everybody, West Coast, CaliCareGroup.com. Go check them out. That's the spot. On this groundbreaking landmark of a show, we are breaking 50 episodes today. And who better to do it than with my brother, Chris Linkovich of the one and only Crew Hand and Terra. But before we start this show off, I want to dedicate this one to my boy Stu and his family out there in Boston. We love you, Stu. One love, Stu. Now let's set this shit off. Now I see he's like out here, and I'm over here too. What up, over here now? What what what's up? up? What up, Chris? Everybody, spoken word podcast. Let's welcome my brother, Chris Linkovich. Let's let's go. Let's give it up. How you doing? Listen, you know, it feels it's stupid. Like if I'm fronting, like, how you doing? Because I just spent the whole fucking week and it feels I like I spent the last even though it was just in total, maybe a week. I've seen you because these shows I felt like, oh, I spent the last six months with you. Like, oh, no, we've been like, yeah, because we had we had the like I've seen the first eight Marvel shows back. I know. I've been to, I've been to all of them. So I far. know you've been on. Yo, you, <laughs> I know you. You can say that. Yo, I've been from all of them because we're reborn. Everything is reborn. Everything started yeah. new. Yeah, yeah. Fresh, fresh slate, clean slate. Clean yeah, slate. but but I'm um, ready. yeah, but um, I was gonna say um, un- unfortunately, what popped up was, you know, we just lost a a, a good, uh, not just a hardcore OG and a boy, mm-hmm. just a a good dude. Like I, we started off the show, yo. Rest in peace, Sue, Stu. Um, man, Stu. you know what's up? Yeah, exactly, yo, Stu. You know what's up, man? I'm, I love seeing everybody. You know, like I said, when even I, and this is coming from me when I saw that on uh, uh, in Fenway Park, that was dope, man. I was like, yo, shout That's out to, to fucking, yeah. yo, mad love to Stu and fucking the whole fam and, and and all of Boston. You know what's up? You know everybody. You know New York hardcore sends their love, but um, you just um. I was just seeing um, last night. I was following. I was jumping on everybody's uh, mm-hmm. what do you call it? Live streams and trying to catch yeah, yeah, some yeah. of the show. And it looked dope. Um, you were there. Uh, tell us something about the show. It was just uh, the like uh, the most insane, just outpouring of support and love for for Stu. Just just from from everyone and everybody and and the bands coming together to to show that and it. You know, pfft, it it was yeah. intense. It was an intense night, you know. Right. I mean, it, it, it was, it was, you know, there was a lot of love, a lot of fun. You know, that's how Stu would want it. You, he wanted everyone to have to get together and and have fun, and, you know, despite what he was dealing with it. And and we did it. It was an amazing send off for for amazing guy. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely, so. it looked amazing. I was following everybody, yeah. everybody set and stuff. And and before we continue, just in case there's storms going on here in Florida. So the, the system's acting up. So if something acts up, you know, we'll make it happen. But anyway, yeah, but yeah. I was following all the shows and it looked, you know, and it just I was psyched just to be like, you know, for him. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. that's how you do it. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, and again, what, what I was glad it was like uh, I got to see that you got to see him, you know, um, not too long before. And that that was my first time also seeing him in a while. So it was good to see you, him. And I was like, oh, good. You know, it was like. Yeah, it all came together at the end, you know, unfortunately for, you know, the, the situation. But I think he got that, you know, he felt the love and I felt it, you know, mm-hmm. and I was over here and I was like, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah I just feel for, I feel fortunate to have been there for the barbecue and just be there with him that day. Because because a lot of people, you know, a lot of friends were like, well, we'll see him at the show. And it, I know. and it didn't happen. I know so. it was days and I was saying and that's why that yeah. meant a lot when I even when I saw it. And I was like, you know, uh, um, you know, we, we, we've dealt with that, that a lot in our fam in general with mm-hmm. all our, you know, our, our squad of people. So and it was good to see that people were able to see, you know, their people around. And I yeah, also oh, yeah. know, uh, listen, when I heard the first time I ever heard the word Baniacs, was because <laughs> of you guys, let's just start with that. 
Okay, let's just start. Yeah, it's real. It's a real thing. It's real. I learned that. I was like, I thought Juggalos, you know, was the only like that. And then I learned there's some other shit. Yo, yeah. shout out to Bane. But listen, you were the first Baniacs. I look at yo, yo, yo we were the I'll break. We're the so you we're know, the maniac, uh, the maniac, baniac. Yeah, you know? exactly. So I remember like early on, yo, we're like we're gonna have some some of the first show, shows together. And it might have been actually um Vogel or somebody, but they were like, yo, yo, you gotta go on to you don't understand. And they said something. I heard the word baniacs, and I was like, why? Goes, oh, the baniacs. Oh, wait till you see them. And I was like, yo, the baniacs. He goes, You'll see why. And then yeah, the yeah, next yeah, thing yeah. I know, we saw you guys playing. I just saw people flying all over the spot. <laughs> It was a different breed of people. It was like, you know, the, these people you're, tr you're like making like a week out of it, out of, and, and traveling with them and caravanning and, and, and doing that whole thing. And it was just a, a different, different type, different breed, you know? Baby, well, listen, you're a fucking different breed. That's one of the things, <laughs> that's one of the things that I like, cause I know a lot of your story, but I want to show part, some of the people your story because it's bugged out because first of all, like, all right. Um, one, um, what are you? Let people know. That's just my favorite part. <laughs> that, you know, that's what I love because my father, when he's everybody, my father met him. He was like, oh, he's from Venezuela. But we're like, <laughs> but let's just start with that. And then I want to okay. go and paint the picture a little bit. As, as Adam Blake would, would say, I'm very <laughs> I'm ethnically ambiguous. I can fit in in, you know, everyone has their own take, their yeah. own, you know, yeah. guess as, as to what it is. And I let people do that. But um, I love it. I'm ha half Filipino, half Polish. Yes. Polipino. I'm a the Polipino. Of Polipino. But, but you look like you're from Venezuela, Honduras, you know? Or if I, you know, if, if I shave my head, I look like, a, you know, Mitz always used to say I was related to The Rock. Yeah, yeah, you, you got know, some Tonga, like, you got some Fiji in you. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, so. No, yeah, exactly, I love that. So this was always, so this was the thing. So also, I always saw the Filipino and I was like, because we grew up with a lot of Filipinos. And then where did you grow up? I just, I grew up, I was born in Connecticut uh, because that's where my dad's side of the family was. Uh -huh. um, but we moved to Maine right away. You were like Maine, was, to, that's what I'm Maine. saying. So, so I'm like, you know, one year when I was one, we moved. We moved to, to yeah, Maine. My man. dad, he was a Navy dude. So there's a base yeah. right up here. And then we, and that yeah, was exactly. It. So, yeah, and yeah. That, there was a lot, like, you, like we always talk about, there was like a, a, a big uh, Filipino community that yeah. came with that base, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like it was like a Filipino American association that like, so they yeah. were getting together on all the holidays, Easter, especially and, of and, course. and Christmas and stuff. And, and, and they would do the potluck and yeah. all the foods coming out. And, 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 yeah. and what part, and what part, uh, uh, Maine. Uh, I'm, I'm like 30, 20, 25 minutes north of Portland. Oh, so it's still Portland. It's more or less that's yeah. a big city near you. You would say yeah, yeah. Portland. So, so Portland's the city and just north of, you know, it's, it's not far at all. It's, it's right there. So yeah. And look, at I so mean, it's a sleepy little grandma town, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You know, Cause this is the thing. So Maine always had, you know, hardcore, you know what I mean? Uh, um, New yeah, England, crazy. you know, always yeah, had yeah. like some type of hardcore, even more hardcore than the punk were known. You know, it's crazy how they were yeah. known for that hardcore shit in that part. And I always knew that. But, you know, I always knew also Maine wasn't known for, you know, I could just speak for myself at the time where Latinos. Number two, <laughs> I never thought Maine would be known for Filipinos. <laughs> so, so, and number two, in hardcore, being Latino was already, you know, uh, you know, being black, Latino, right. Asia, whatever was already, you know, being, you know, where we already are uh, a small few. But what about being Filipino? Yeah. And first of all, um, all right, this is that's the death being Filipino, living in Maine, getting into uh, metal rock or whatever the first right. wave of anything was, because that's always going to be the interesting dynamic, because for me, it was whatever you went through in reverse. So, so wait, so what's the question? What's the, what so, was the first shit I got into? Like that? I, yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's take it from there. So the, what was the okay. first thing you got into? I, I think it was, um, well, my dad was always, he was always cranking like, like, uh, kind of like the oldies on the radio. Cause he was yeah. kind of, when he was a kid, he was just, he was like a, like a greaser. Yeah. You know, he was like a greaser dude, always working on a car, always like, you know, getting into fights and stuff, getting kicked out of school. So he was yeah. like on that, on that stuff. So we were always hearing that. 
but it wasn't until I'm pretty sure the definitive moment was Wayne's world for me when I was uh-huh. like in second grade or something and they're playing queen uh-huh. bohemian rhapsody and they're, you know, they're that's in the crazy. car at the very beginning. And they're like, the dude's going to puke in the car and they're all singing. Uh, they're all singing uh night, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Oh, that's totally. Oh, that definitely that's in your DNA right there. <laughs> I, that came out. Many so that, times. Was it. that was yeah. it. That was it. That, that, that was it. And I was like, all right, I'm, this rock, whatever this is, I'm about it. And you know, we, my mom started buying me like, like cassette tapes at like at the store. And I was yeah. cranking those at my Walkman. I had a little, like little, um, cardboard tube. And that was like my guitar. And I would just uh-huh. rock out to this on this cardboard tube uh-huh. and cranking queen. And then eventually my dad got me, he bought me like my first guitar after that. All right. So, saw, so, so, what, so you heard it, you saw that and, on your own, you were like, okay, I like this. Let me get it. And then are you watching yeah. videos? Where are you? Are you catching it? Or are you just listening to the records? Or what are you, what, where are you, just where are you getting those... the fantasy from? You know what I mean? It's just those tapes, those those cassettes. I didn't really know. Everybody, radio, cassettes. 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 You know? Okay. It's those All right, cassettes. kids like... out there. You know, don't let um, the baby face he got to fool you. He's talking about <laughs> these things called cassettes and a tape player. They, right, they had right, them back right. in the day. This so. obs- obsolete technology. <laughs> yeah. But it was cassettes and it was in, and you know, the radio. You're yeah. just cranking, cranking the radio and like the, the alternative radio stations and stuff. And, the, and yeah. then, and then, and then when, um, honestly, and then it was gre- like uh, when the Green Day basket case video happened, uh-huh. I was still like a little kid. And that uh-huh. kind of like, that was huge everywhere. Like, that was huge. That blew, that blew my mind right there uh-huh. too. So then it was, then it was Green Day. The everything. first, it was Green Day Dookie. Yeah. Everything at that point. Was that the record when they got heavy? They had that gen, 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 that's gen. the That's the next one. Okay, that riff was, they was hard as fuck. Yeah. I would never think I would say Green Day was hard as fuck, but that riff was hard <laughs> as fuck. Go figure. But all right, the Dookie was the big album. That was like. Yeah, yeah, that's where they blew up or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So that was like when you heard, okay, that was kind of like the first wave of what, what we do now in a way. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Like, okay, you listen. Now, when you got that, did you see it? What was it? Was it the sound or the look that you, you were like, okay, I like that shit. It had to be the craziness because those guys got that, that, yeah, that little bit of I, that. It, it was a little bit of, it was both, especially the guitar. I saw, I saw the guitar, the guitar had stickers all over it. Yeah. And so immediately I had a guitar and I wanted to like, stick stuff to the guitar my dad was you know he's like what are you yeah. doing to your your guitar i'm like i'm like sticking anything i could to it like and i couldn't even play it i just liked the way it looked at that point you yeah. know and, and and yeah the look and the sound it was 50 50 like yeah. just like you know yeah it's always that the look always got you know for me it was almost more important than the sound it was like yeah. oh the you know oh the look and then oh shit like the message that is behind the, the front message. It's like, no, they're really about some shit. You know, that's yeah. how I was when I saw AF. I was like, yo, they look like dirt bags. But yeah. yo, but something, <laughs> but it was something hard and real about it. I remember I said I go, yeah. they were all like sweaty and greasy. I saw in a picture, I was like, yo, they look like almost junkies, kind of. And I was like, they look filthy, but I was like, they look kind of hard because they had <laughs> a tattoo on his neck and they were like, yeah. you know, no makeup. They had he had no shirt on. And I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, no, that's the shit like. They're not like you're going to run into those dudes somewhere like they're not hiding. You know, I just felt <laughs> no, that no, from yeah. a picture and I was like, yeah. All right. And then. All right. So like a lot of people, it's that if it's going to get in, you're going to get in through like the 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 what's kind of the alternative heavy on the radio. If it's the yeah, uh, um, that end of it or the sound garden, that type of shit that was also around back then. You know, that was another intro to some people getting into heavy music. What was the first next step into what we what we do you know i think it was like at that point it was this weird this weird like situation where a friend you know we're we're all into like you know like radio rock and green day and stuff and i had already gone to my so now i'm going to my first concert Uh so now i'm in i'm like in sixth grade we're going to see bush so we saw Bush. You know, yeah, they were, like so, it's they were always, it's always, yeah, yeah, anybody who's in sixth grade and gets to see Bush, <laughs> I salute them. But anyway, <laughs> that's another, but that's another story. But uh, all right, no, but yo, but that's 
that's pretty dope. Like yeah. going to shows to see live music that young. Yeah. That yeah. don't happen. It don't happen every right, right. I mean, because that was because our we had a friend who had the cool parents, you know, who who were into like just exposing us. They weren't like the cool parents where it was like there was no parenting and they, you yeah. know, or it was like anything. They were the cool parents in the way where it was let's expose them to yeah. like culture, to culture. Yeah. You know, so they brought us to um not just concerts, but they were bringing us to like like the art museum. Yeah, or yeah, like, yeah. Or or going to see like uh like a like a play and stuff, you know? Yeah. Just exposing us to everything they could to see what would stick. So so they brought us, they brought me and and, and our friends to that first concert, Bush. And then the next day that was it. We were like, that was our thing. We were just like these alternative rock yeah. kids, you know. Yeah. And and then I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks later, he's at the the mall or something with with his dad and these kids are bumming change this is the story i like that <laughs> i know like they're bumming change and so they hook them up and then they're like go to this concert tonight go to the show and so we're like okay they're like okay cool i get the call we're gonna go we think it's we don't know we have no idea what it is yeah, so we're going show. to this we're going to this thing we're wearing our like bush our bush t-shirts <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and like just look like these little your yeah. alternative rocker, you know, grunge kids, and it's a it's like a legit hardcore show. We're, yeah. we're at this hardcore show. It's like <laughs> me and our my homie, his dad, and we're just like this what whole the... new thing. We're like, what is this? Yeah. And I can't I, like. It was like a it was a pretty heavy show, uh, and then it was um the next day that was that it was like I want to shave my head, I want to wear my camo, I want to wear boots like camel shorts chain wallet like everything that was like hip at that time so that was like that was like 1996 that was yeah. like, like 12 years old and yeah. that was that was that was it that changed the whole trajectory I'm right like, now I'm, now i'm over here yeah i'm doing this thing now yeah and now how you catching those shows so, all right you caught that by mistake now where's yeah, yeah. the next show now you guys are like okay how the fuck now you're hooked now you're, you're yeah. fiending now how, how you're finding these other shows what's the next kind of so, thing so, when you're looking in the paper well, how it works up there yeah like well there, there's because that was a shows. good time still up there where you live mm -hmm. for yeah, hardcore yeah, yeah, yeah. was good because we were yeah. going up there a lot in, in that area new england was bumping yeah yeah and i was fortunate to catch the tail end of those shows like at zoots yeah you know i only went there a handful of times but it was yeah. You know, it's enough to this. You know, today I can say that it's yeah, kind of like bragging yeah. rights. I can. Kind I of remember say that shit too. Yeah, yeah. And that was a wild. That was a wild venue. That yeah. was just like a, kind of like you'll. That's like a time and place kind of thing. You'll never, you'll never stumble across something like like that. Not in Portland. You know? Yeah, yeah. It was just like just insanity. And so, so now you're going to those shows, and they're giving. You know, kids are are, are they're handing out flyers. You know, just little little hand flyers, and we had like a local newspaper publication like uh, that had the show listings for the venue and uh what else is cool is that um ian mcfarlane who i saw yesterday at the show oh, he, he was from he was from the area that i live in and went mm -hmm. to the same like high school he was way much older i didn't know him when he was in school but we would see so he was booking there and his bands were playing there too gotcha. polyglot so polyglot's playing there and there that now this larger than life thing to us we got to go to all the polyglot shows yeah. and like and do and and be a part of that whole thing and so but it's crazy like the area the town i live in like it was a hotbed for these guys like they were having little local shows here and like and then in portland too and they were from the area and it's just crazy to think then there was so much youth culture happening and now yeah. it's like a much different it, yeah like, it's thing. like that and that's why we're lucky and and those areas should be lucky for people like you and shit like that in our areas because that's what happens. It goes dry, and you yeah. hope there's some a left people that came from that good watering hole to survive. You know, guys like yeah. you, the same thing in our. Look at New York. I love New York. I'm New York till I'm in a box. But New York ain't when New York is. It's different. You know, especially yeah. with the music. It ain't. There's some new bands coming. Finally, I lo I love it. Now there's a lot more bands coming up. But it took mm -hmm. a while. You know what I mean? Pennsylvania yeah. was taking everybody out. You know, I'll say it, you know, as far as a lot of new bands, consistency, you know, California coming hard. But, you know, now New York is coming right. Uh, East Coast, you know what I mean? I like, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, what it should sure. be. We need that new 
bunch of bands and shit. So yeah, yeah. But fucking, um, but up there always had a lot of um, again a classic uh, um, uh New England hardcore like you know and and what I loved about it it was um the same type of hardcore mix we would get where you would get that sometimes the oi mix with a hardcore band mm -hmm. and you would still get some of the you know the thrash mix but you had that option that mix of oi sometimes the hard shit you know um the metal shit you know now it's yeah. All really separated, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 so. yeah. It's like those mixed bills, yeah, we're we're great. It brings out everybody, you know, and it really makes the show like something, something to, to talk about and just yeah. Yeah. All Good right. Time. So now, so now you're out there, you're in fucking, you're going to these shows or whatever, yeah. And, and you're gonna you're going to hardcore shows. You want to now? There's the time to get in the band. How does the, the whole band shit start? You say we're gonna start a band, or yeah. I know how it goes. So a bunch of dudes, let's do it. Now, yeah. <laughs> do, are you already playing your instrument or are you uh, or for the um, band? I, I have that guitar that my dad got. So so that was like. Oh, so you kept that guitar into the first band. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So I had that guitar. But but when I was, you know, I took like maybe one or two lessons and I realized it was going to take a lot of like effort. To, <laughs> so it just ended. It, I was just like, I can't do this. I ended up in the closet. And so fast forward to those first shows i'm digging it out of the closet yeah i want it i'm like i want to figure yeah. this out so now we're so now we're jamming we can't even we don't even know how to play we don't even we're just ringing this we're just making noise <laughs> it's just noise that's I all know. it is so so but we're like yeah this is the band this is a band you know uh but so now but that's given us like the incentive to to really learn and figure it out at yeah. that point. And then it's like, okay, now we're, now we're, now we're shifting into like middle school, seventh and eighth grade. And, and, uh, were we jamming then still? I think we were just kind of like, it, we didn't have that first real band until I think it was like freshman year of high school. Uh -huh. And the, and we, and it was a hard, like it was, uh, we had two things going. We had like, made up of the same members we had like a ska punk band you know we we thought we were doing this like i don't know like uh it. this like you know fast you know fast parts with like ska like yeah. breakdowns <laughs> in it. like yeah yeah and and, and uh, but then we also had our hardcore band called headstomp named after g i joe headstomp oh, yeah there you go so so name. we were like so we're like um and eventually we're like let's for the ska stuff like we're like we're done with this we're doing it's hardcore that's it yeah so i got to you know i hung up my plaid pants <laughs> yeah you hung up your, your jacket <laughs> your, your suit yeah. you stop yeah, pressing yeah, yeah. your suits because ska at that time too was like was was big absolutely it was it was coming up you know it had it had a, a moment there and uh so then it was just it was hardcore at that point and now we're playing like just a mix of we didn't we couldn't hone in on like a style it was just like we were covering like earth crisis and like yeah. you know because victory records that was like where we were at we were yeah, our head was that, on victory records for that time and, and we didn't really know coming from maine we couldn't really see beyond that pre like before the internet too yeah you know and and we and we were going to shows here and there but we weren't like involved enough to really know what was going on we just yep. knew what we liked yep. we knew what we liked and we we're like and we would just jam on you know we would be playing like an earth crisis song and then in the same same session we're playing Warzone as one yeah like, yeah it yeah. Was just, just like, yeah it's just yeah exactly that's how we were like whatever it was it was like you like what you like you know it's yeah. like later on it became like Oh, I gotta like these because it's under a certain kind of label, kind of thing. Yeah, you know, like oh, no, I, I, I could. Oh, this got a this kind of sound, a, this yeah. label sound. The minute that shit started, that shit got whack. Because I was yeah. like, you know, you should, it shouldn't matter. You shouldn't be molded to the fucking label. Right, you know right, I mean? right, you know right. I mean? like, to, like, but then once we got a little bit older, that's kind of we kind of got wind of what was happening in Boston. Mm -hmm. And they were having this whole youth crew revival thing happening, yep. you know. So then we were like, we shifted gears, yeah. you know. We were we were like, we were repping, we were repping New York hard. Yeah. You know, the other thing I forgot to say is when the New York hardcore documentary, yep, when that came out, 
that was huge for me too. Like I remember the trailer coming out and I'd go to my friend's house and I would sneak on the internet and try to watch the trailer and I'd watch it like a hundred times. Yeah. And then just, and then waiting for, I feel like it was year, like a few years before it even came out. And then one day I found it in my local record store and I was like, Oh my God, I have it. Yeah. And, and, and then, so we just watched, we watched that until like, we knew like we could recite yeah. lines from this thing, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, that's probably where I heard, you know, I had the compilation because they even put out a CD, like a yeah. soundtrack, and and I wore the shit out of that too. I loved all those songs, you know, all the Mabel songs and, and the VOD songs and yeah, and and uh uh there was so much awesome stuff on that. And okay, so but now eventually we're shifting gears. There's a straight edge Boston thing happening, and we want we want to be we want to we do want that in. now. We want so it. Yeah, like, it. Yeah, it's popping. You want to be like, you guys yeah. are ready to play. Yeah. You guys got energy. That whole yeah. movement was energy. Yeah. You know, but we traded in our, our <laughs> New York year. You know, we we're like, you know, we did exactly what you said, which was like, we, we wanted to put a, we wanted to be more like, focused on this hip label kind yeah. of this scene yeah. that was happening so kind know? of yeah yep yep and that happens and, a lot a lot yeah. well young bad because you want to go where the party's at yeah yeah it's hard to so say no nah, i'm gonna make my own party it's hard to do that because <laughs> sometimes your party's lonely <laughs> yeah 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 you know? exactly and, and so so we're shifting gears now we're playing you know we're we're listening to those bands coming out of boston like the you know tanger fight in my eyes like the revelation yeah like you know that had more of that early revelation straight edge vibe and we're doing that and that was a whole era that whole revival of that was happening yeah. so that was happening all around and and now we're starting to like we got our driver's license now so we're going down we're traveling we're going to the palladium and uh also in that time uh bridge nine records is just starting and so there's all these bands that are like happening yeah. like overnight, it seems. There's new bands happening and 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 playing fast, fast hardcore and stuff. And and then um and then Maine too is having these little scenes throughout Maine just popping up. It almost seems like you could play six or seven different towns. Yeah. Great. You know, right, you know, in Maine, you know, in these you know, these little areas and kids starting these little scenes in their high schools and and it was just like a crazy crazy to yeah. think then what like what was happening to now like you know yeah. it's, it's it's especially here like it's a it's a bummer but yeah it's a ghost uh, time believe me new york city yeah. new york hardcore new york hardcore new york hardcore not till now this was starting to look like a ghost town a little bit yeah you know yeah. as far as places and you know it's everything yeah but it's... yeah and it was just it's, it's crazy. Yeah, these, these kids just with that do it yourself, like like mentality and just creating, just cre like creating these a scene, a whole thing, you know, and and so so outbreak is now starting, and uh, we're hearing about this band outbreak and and their town. It's kind of like a ski town, sugarloaf area. And we're going, you know, we're traveling up there to see their bands and we're bringing our band up there too uh -huh. to play. They're, in, they're inviting us to play with their bands. And so now we're, now we're networking within Maine, you know, with the other, like the other high schools and the other like scenes and, and these younger bands. It was a young, it was a young scene. The older guys had already moved. They're, they're already moved to Boston or, or they've already moved on. Maybe they've, you know done with hardcore or whatever but we're kind of like so it's a very young scene teenagers and oh, this lot of high energy you know maybe the shows weren't the biggest but we're making it yeah we're just making it like a good time for 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 us and uh an outbreak was the band that was like the like the the torchbearer yeah and seeing them go, you know, it, like that high energy, uh, just chaotic, fast, yeah. insane hardcore. And how did they end up swallowing you guys up? And how did that all happen? Uh, it was. Uh, 
I was like about one or two years older and I had graduated already. And I was just, and they knew I was playing guitar in these bands and playing together. And, and, and at one point they just needed a new member. They needed someone to come in and play. And, and I took over and that was it. Now we're like you know, traveling the world and we're, and you know, we're going crazy. And we, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, Ryan, he was like connected. Like he, he had like one of the, like, like a message board that yeah. he had started and like with that whole thing. So people were like, we're connected. And, and, and the band just hit the ground running. Like we could, yeah. you know, sign to bridge nine right away. And it was like, now we're like, we're everywhere now. You know, our first tour was driving from Maine to Florida straight yeah. and for one show and yeah. then drive home. Oh, you know, yeah. that, was, that was tour. That was tour. Ah, oh, yeah. And that's when we ended up um, meeting you guys was during the outbreak. For, yeah, 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 era. yeah, yeah. And what year was that? Do you remember? I think it was. Um, I think Ballpark. it was 2000, 2005 or six. That's still how many years ago? You see, it's a fucking long time ago, which it's is crazy. Time, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because because yeah. we because we were we were touring with Agnostic Front. You done shows with them first, right? First, first, yeah. and and. That was the first time I had even seen. I went to CBs, for, like yeah. I got to play CBs. Oh, you got to go! Ah, yeah, that's I dope. Got you got play, to play. Yeah, you got to play CBs. That's big, man. To say you do, you did that is yeah. You know what I mean? I used to be like, I, I won't front. I was one of those guys when CBs came out the later years. I'll be like, fuck CBs, you know that. <laughs> but it was the greatest. I was being an asshole and fucking. But to be able to say you played it, you know, yeah. especially you know, and that was. That great. was the first time too, where where I could where I'm in the city, and I'm seeing this audience, this crowd made up of like Latinos and 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 black guys and and like Hispanics and like just like the whole mix. Like so of, that's where you started noticing more. Wow, like yeah. oh wow, because this is all right. So this is kind of going back to what I I kind of jumped the gun. I asked you earlier, but that was my point. That I guess that's the moment you realize. Because mm -hmm. this was the thing, I know Maine, and Maine is not known for Filipinos. No, you know, it's known for mountain people. You know, shout out to all my white trash mountain people and white trash heads out there. No, but you know, mad love. But you know what I'm saying? And I know what it is to be a minority. Mm -hmm. Look at already at being black, Latin, or whatever in hardcore music. It's even though there's a lot, it's still we're a minority. But in the big cities, it's kind of easier. Now, outside the big cities, you know, I travel the world, so I know what it is. So I, I'm always thinking about it. Like, what's his story? How was, you know, yeah. what was his journey with this? Because it's what, what happened with me. I was in an all black and Spanish school and I was a, a hardcore skin. And they were like, how could you be a skinhead? That's white power shit. And I was like, ah, you motherfuckers don't know. You is kind of reverse. You were being yeah, yeah. ethnic and, and more, you know. And those areas are more white or whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, oh, for sure. And, and, and um, um, how was it for you? Did, did did you did you ever feel out of place? You know, or you just didn't pay because I exactly maybe like me, I didn't pay attention to later yeah. when I said, "Oh, should I have paid attention?" When it didn't matter no more. I don't did I? I know like it wasn't until like I started getting a little older, like you know, because I'm. I'm, you know, I've got my white side, yeah. and the Filipino side, and and uh, it, growing up, it, it it didn't affect me. But then until you know, you start getting a little older, middle school, high school, and now it's you're exposed. To this, yeah, you're exposed to these guys who are, you know, because the school is made up of of different areas. You know, like there was some more rural areas mm -hmm. kids are coming from, and <laughs> and and like now you're exposed to these these types and and. Yes. And yeah, now I'm hearing little things and I'm like, a am a little kid, like I'm like 97 pounds or something. And I'm yeah. hearing the stuff and, and uh, yeah, it was like, now I'm starting to hear, you know, derogatory things or something. And, and it's a mind fuck because I'm like, but yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm white. I'm yeah, I'm also I'm white. Like, I don't know. What, what, and, and so now I'm confused and and that was a, and now I'm uh, embracing hardcore even more yes. at that point because I'm hearing in the lyrics, you know, like an anti racist, anti racist messages and things like that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, this is, I, I need this now more yeah. than ever, you know? And yeah, and that's exactly the same thing with me. Why, why I also say it because 
there's two type of people when it comes to uh, uh, um, in certain situations being ethnic. You know, I don't make this thing about being ethnic, but this is mm -hmm. a little side thing that happens with being ethnic and into this music. Like you could uh, two things could happen. You could fall and fall out of, out of it because your 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 surroundings or you say fuck that because I love this shit so much like what you did you were like no I need this because yeah. something about this I need something to vent because I'm feeling yeah. some shit for me same thing they used to tell me how could you be into that white boy shit that's some white power <laughs> shit and I used to be like if anything I felt like hardcore was a superpower I said yeah yeah you don't even know what time it is I'm not gonna even waste my time explaining it to you because you don't deserve to know yeah. what it is because you're that dumb. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how I felt. But I was, you know, we, you could ask anybody in, in my junior high school. It was like Beto with like two metalhead guys and I was a skin. And I was a skin when all you saw was Geraldo Rivera, some white power shit. And they were like, wait a minute, you're Latin skinhead. How could that happen? And I used to be like, people knew I got down. People knew, <laughs> you know, what's up. So they never got me on that shit, but it was confusing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. being ethnic, I kind of had to bulk up and be like, nah, fuck that. Yo, like, I loved, I know what this shit is really about. And, yeah. you know, in a way you had to do that too. And I try to say that because I know there's ethnic or, or people that are not the common in their surroundings that uh, that get involved with this music. Sometimes you're an outcast. Like, yo, you know, I know, like, um, you know, I know some Brazilian kids, they're living in Norway. And they're like, yo, it's different. Same, vice yeah. versa. Some kids yeah. from Germany living in South America. You know, yeah. I know what it is to be the outcast. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. But you could, but this shit, when you love this shit that much, you don't give, you don't give a fuck. You know, that's oh, yeah. why I love it. Like, you, we're the cockroaches that we ain't going nowhere because we were <laughs> supposed to be here. All the people that faded away should fade away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good rinse. You know like, what I mean? Like, I, I would, you know, I'd put my, you know, records on at home and stuff, and. You know, my dad, he'd be like, what, what is this? Like, like this, like, I can't believe, like, you know, say crazy shit about it. Be like, like, oh, like, um, if I, this was my, you know, back in my day, we go down there with the boys and we, and we'd beat everybody up and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you like? That's crazy talk. And, um, but that fueled me that, that like fueled me Yes, too, to be like, you're telling me, yeah. You're telling me no. I'm gonna go even yeah. harder. I'm gonna oh, go even harder yeah. for it. If he was smart, he would have just yeah, let it like, go, let it fade. You know, this is a phase. Let it go and see what would happen. Yeah. But, but uh, what's done is done, and now I'm. Yeah, I'm that's here. what I tell people. I'm like, you know, like when they're like, "Oh, I got out of it." I can understand. All right, you don't go to every show. I can understand. You don't wear a hardcore T-shirt. Oh, I can understand that. But how could you not? I'm like, you don't get angry no more. If you don't get angry no more, then I can understand you not having a place for hardcore in your life. Everybody gets angry. Yeah, that's yeah. when you put on hardcore. That's yeah. when you got like, you know what I mean? That's when you do some or what or when you want to fucking or when you're in the gutter and you got to climb out and your only option is to climb out of that gutter. That's what you put on hardcore. But there is you don't got to listen to it all day. But there's right, right, situations right. where it's necessary. <laughs> The oh, same sure. way how slow music is good, calm the savage beast. But when you got when you're in the motherfucking trenches, you got to throw that hardcore shit on. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a you place for that. And fucking, uh, and and then now you got outbreak. So you're playing yeah. a fucking outbreak. Um, yeah. Your first time outside the countries with outbreak. No, so so through outbreak, now we're touring nationwide. We're going everywhere. We've got like we're touring in like uh, we found like an ambulance. And we turned it into like a, our tour van. We had a hand, one of the guys, uh, the other guitarist was real handy with, yeah. with that kind of stuff. So he built out this ambulance we found. And now we're like this, like this, we're in this crazy van just touring cross country and we're just making connections. And we, um, we connected like really, really well with um, this band, Internal Affairs. Yeah. Corey shout out to the Corey and all of them. Yeah. Hell yeah. And, and so they were like our brother band, like East West Coast, like brother band and similar shit, you know, just get, 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 super yeah. fast, hardcore. Yeah. And and um, they got the offer to go to Europe and uh, he needed a guitarist. And all of a sudden he's on the phone with me Boy. and I'm like, oh, man, I get to, I'm leaving. I'm going to Europe. Yeah. I'm doing I'm going to freaking like I couldn't believe it. Uh, 
milestone moment like leaving my my little like yeah my little town my little ass town and playing music and going overseas yeah. with oh, yeah. with hardcore you know and uh, uh no turning back they were on that tour with us shout uh, out to no turning back all the dutch yeah all the dutch and we just that was the first run and then i went home and and told all this you know told the guys like you know how great it was and all the <laughs> stories and everything and now we're all itching to go to go back at that point ah but, yeah and when's your next time back because outbreak was started because when we when we started touring with you guys you guys were making noise and you guys were playing a lot yeah. like you guys were like yeah, it was yeah. a good band to put on the bill and then you guys were going for a bit and then i just remember you know somewhere along the line for everybody don't know you know you came on the road and it's funny because i got on my old computer i'm gonna bust it out i'm trying to get it together i got some <laughs> old footage now i'm trying to remember what year it was mitch will remember maybe you would i'm bad but, with dates. so so that was the infiltrate the system tour Okay, so whatever so year think, that came out, I think that, so. I think that was 07, I think. Wow, wow, so wow, that's a long time ago already. And, and, and that was a long time, yeah. And basically, everybody, um, we brought Chris to tech on that tour. And actually, you know, our sound man that we had for years at the time, Jay, that was his first tour with yeah, us yeah, before yeah. he fucking even knew English. So, shout yeah. out to <laughs> thank you, Jay, for you know, you're welcome for us teaching you English. By the way, <laughs> and your mama's um, Doc Martin shoelace um, cord that was there. I remember that joke. But anyway, mm -hmm. but I remember. Yeah, but everybody out there, um, we brought you mm -hmm. along to fucking um, tech on that tour. And those were like yeah. some crazy times because we had a lot of crazy express <laughs> tour, like uh, from planes. We're jumping to crazy countries, Turkey. Oh, my and God. It was insane oh, yeah. times. You remember yeah, that yeah, shit? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I remember. Mabel and Outbreak, we were we were touring in the States. I can't remember where. I think it was the, near the end of the tour, maybe the last day. And and Ryan was talking to Freddie. Freddie was on the phone or something. Needed a, I needed a tech last minute. Didn't have one. And Ryan was like, ask, ask Linkovich. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, you think you would do it? He was like, yeah, probably. So he asked me and I was like, I don't know. I have no idea how to do it. I could, I could barely, I could barely set it up my own shit. You like, knew more barely... than we did. <laughs> and and I was like, all right, like, I'm I'm in. Let's do it. Like, why not? And uh, I remember I was playing Sound of Fury. I think that was the first Sound of Fury, and I had to get from Sound of Fury to back to wherever we were flying out of it, New Jersey or or somewhere. And and I was like on, like it was like to the wire. Yeah, getting there. I showed up. I, like, and that was like planes, <laughs> buses, trains, just to get there. Yeah. I, you guys were already at the gate. Mm -hmm. And I showed up with my bag. Yes. I got and, and that on was like, video. Oh, I was going to go crazy. <laughs> I got that on video. Now, it's not here. I got it somewhere and I got to get it. And everybody out there, eventually that's going to go on Smoking Word TV. You fucking from the minute you walk up i remember i had an old video camera that little digital ones and you walk up and we're like yo and you just came and you had the, you already had the, the light on your head the light. <laughs> the, the, you had that the lantern yeah, the hat that, turn. Was my, that was my yeah, my yeah yeah the headlamp but, but like i was so to the wire Freddie was like yes. he's like yo if you didn't show up i was gonna be an animal i was like uh, uh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm here I'm thanks here. thanks like yeah. exactly no pressure and, and, and then, we flew yeah, into no Sweden. Then Sweden was the first show, if I remember correctly. I don't. I, I, yeah, I think I, so. We probably, did a festival. Yeah, yeah. I think a festival in Sweden was the fucking right off the grip. Right off the grip. <laughs> and I got pictures right. of us. You're I got right. a great picture of you. It's in Turkey. You remember we had to do that express yeah. show in the middle of nowhere, and right. you're like in front of the crowd, and you got the lantern, and the light <laughs> shining. It's a fucking amazing shot. It's like so crazy. And then we almost missed. You remember the airplane? You know that. Mm. You remember there was a problem with the airports. We ran to the gate in it, Turkey. A lot of yeah. A going lot of, and, oh my god! Russia went to Russia. Yeah. On that train. Oh, uh, we did the night. Oh, you remember that shit? Yeah, we had a little, a little uh, <laughs> uh, misunderstanding. Yes, there was in the a lot of room. Oh yeah. The, oh yeah. Somebody got knocked out. Freddie knocked this dude out. <laughs> he basically hit, knocked him out through the wall. Through he the hit, wall. punched through the wall. Punch through the wall and then knock the guy out. You yeah, know, shout I, I was out like the, cleaning up. I was, I was cleaning up the stage. That was and all of a sudden, I hear the commotion through the wall. And yeah, and like 
punch the wall through the wall or something. That was amazing. And, Everybody, yeah. look at um um, we're a lot of things, but one thing we're not are rock stars. And if you decide to call us that, get ready to get stomped out. We stomp exactly. these dudes out barefooted, just so you know, because we don't <laughs> give then, a fuck. And that's for calling us some rock star shit on yeah. some bullshit, you know. And then there, and then that, and then his own boys checked him outside. Even. Shout like, out to my crew, the crew out there, the St. Petersburg crew. You know what's <laughs> up? Yeah, mad love to them. Yeah, they had to check him, but um, yeah. what a great! I forgot that was on that tour. That was great, yeah, man. So yeah. much shit happened on that tour, so like. <laughs> and then um, we did that, and you you did um, you did some other runs with us, right? I did, did South of South America. Oh shit! Which yeah, one? Yeah. Which one? I just remember like. Like, was I was I because there was one I didn't do, but I did those with South America, which yeah, you. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to I remember, remember you guys had to get you guys had to get escorted <laughs> to the stage in security yeah. ponchos. Yeah, to that was hide, yeah. hide your identity. That was Go crazy. Through. I forgot that one. Yeah, and, and they were like, I remember saying, I remember someone I was by the window, like like in the backstage area or something, they're like, someone say, oh, you might want to get away from the windows. Why? And they're going to start throwing rocks and riding because they can't get in. Yeah. Because like, it sold out and people want to get in so bad. They were just going to, they were going crazy. Oh man, I forgot that. I man, you listen, we, you got in some good ones. Cause those were like my, those were like my classic memories too. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you were yeah. right there for the, it ain't like, oh yeah, riots happen all the time. Right. right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it was like, like militarized the street. Yeah. Shit. That was in Ch Chile and all that shit. But that, th th those shows, I'll never forget. Like just the, yeah, the energy, these kids are getting to see, yeah, you know, uh, a, a real deal hardcore show with, a, with, with, with songs they can sing in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. That and, was special. Just like, something. Yeah. Like that was like something special. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. For, for us, it's like, you know, same thing. It's like, you know, like one, you know, obviously it's our heritage and all that, but we never thought like, you know, going to these countries, you know, when we were kids to do hardcore, you're crazy when they're like, oh, you're going to go to Ecuador. You're going to go to Brazil and they're going to know and yeah. like your band. We're like, get out of here. You know, yeah. you don't think that. And then you're like, no, they're fucking hardcore and punk forever their metal's been in south america forever we forget we think you know it just just happens in america yeah. and shit and you, and you guys hadn't even been there only once before that maybe right? once before that was yeah. early on because those yeah. were like the, the the first wave like we did argentina in in 93 like three four shows insane and then we yeah. went to brazil a couple years later but that was like our first time i think in chile and those spots yeah. like that, that was like some fucking crazy times. Those like, yeah, yeah, I yeah, wish yeah. we got to get those videos and shit. Oof. Yeah, some crazy. crazy times. And then we do. All right. So you do a couple of those tours and mm -hmm. then um, now you're playing. And then you go back to now where does Crew Hand come in? Because so, so Crew, Crew Hand pops Hand. up somewhere. Yeah, it was a Chris Crew Cross Hand at that time has has already started, I think. So Crew Hand 06 and I think that was 07. And now um, and now it's now I've left Outbreak. And cruel hands priority now. Yeah, and and so did the other. So did three. So did Nate. So did Seeger. Yeah, and and now it's now we're doing that full time, and and we're just we're kind of we hit the ground running with that. You know, members. You know, we were in That's outbreak, a, yeah. and 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 uh, and we're doing everything. We're going worldwide. We're going to Europe and Japan, and we're doing it. But we're also doing it backpack. We're doing it backpack wild style too. Because yeah. Like, like uh, we're getting opportunities from the smaller, of smaller promoters and stuff in Central America or in South America, and we're just like, yeah, I see you and Nate doing wild yeah. shit. You guys, right, are right, like, back out wilding. But and so I think I, I think Nate, he was kind of like the he was the uh, the point man, and and he wanted to kind of take advantage of those situations. Be like, well, we could go there, and then he could he could go on vacation. And yeah, just yeah, and yeah. just live there for like a week and surf or something or like yeah. or like, and so we were taking these crazy wild style like just we got our backpack and our guitar and we're just hoping someone's waiting for us at the next stop you know we're 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 taking charter buses through the jungle crazy you know <laughs> trying to get into the next city and just like and and uh, just praying we get we're like someone is there and gonna put us up. You know, because because no one speaks Spanish or no, they don't speak English. Yeah, we don't speak Spanish. And we're just like, 
were just, it was crazy. It was you, wild. Just, you just keto Taco Bell all day, all the way to yeah. South America. <laughs> Burrito, Taco Bell. Yeah, yeah. But then and, we did it. We, so we did in, we did uh, sent, um, Southeast Asia. Yep. Went to the Philippines. No, you guys made made. You guys got out there, man. You definitely. Yeah. And that's what you do. It's the right way because take advantage yeah. of doing it when you can. Yeah. And even those little uh, resources go a long way. Look at, you know, it got you to your family in the Philippines. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, Which big. I never thought I would do. Never thought you know, in my life. You I done would get big, there. You've been in bigger bands since then and all this shit. But that's the shit that got you to the Philippines. So, right, right. you know, the people forget that, don't you know, that those first things are what that that get you from um um the starting line off. That's the hardest part, really, that yeah, fucking yeah. That first gust of power. And then, all right, so, you know, um, a crew hand's going. I know you go on, and it kind of goes. So, and then fast forward, now it's Terra. Terra yeah. needs a guitarist. What, how's that happen? You get the call. How does that shit come up? It's like crew hand had been just running itself into the ground. Just, you know, we've got new lineups, new members, just, just, uh, Taking, you know, but at the same time, taking taking on just a workload that that didn't make any sense for for the time, and and we're and so we're like, you know, we're doing all these a lot of mixed bill touring, uh, where we don't really fit the bill, yeah, yeah, and hoping to gain exposure, and like we signed to like you're you know, going bigger, for it, you were going for it, we're going for it, yeah, and then we did Warp Tour, which was which was on the bucket list let's let's do what we need to do to get there so we get there and we do that and as that was ending we're kind of losing steam like uh and it's like morale is low and we're just at this point where let's do a couple more see what happens and then we kind of just yeah we're we're, we're we're taking a break from it but as we're taking this break i'm having this existential crisis like what am i gonna do i gotta go figure my life out like i can't like i've been doing this and relying on this for for years yeah. and years and years i'm like oh my god yeah. but as that's happening david wood is 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 leaving terror and a cruel hand tour ends up in la scott's there and it's i'm like what's going on who's playing bass and he's like i don't know you want to play bass and i was like I do. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> like, and so, um, it, yes, it, yes, please. So that was just one of those. Everything kind of just lined up. It kind of always just lines up, works oh, out. Oh you know? yeah. And how long that you're a terror head? How long you been in, in the band? I guess that was 17, 18, 19, 20. I guess this would be the fourth year. I think. Wow. That's, but that's then we had a big. whole year of nothing. Yeah, so. nothing. That's still that's big. Yeah. That's that's yeah, still yeah. big. And that's and then it, now. Yeah. Shout out to Terra, but it's fucking some crew hand time now. now. We're doing, now we're doing crew hand, hand comes time. back now. Then I'm hearing shout out to Jay Fury. So then I get, you know, I always knew crew hand was lingering around, blah blah blah. And then I start hearing words from um, uh, um, uh, uh, Jay Fury. Shout out to Diablo's Den podcast, even though Ezek is a hater. Oh, oh, Jay, Jay Reason, Jay yeah, Reason, Jay Reason. Shout out to Jay and the Diablo's Den podcast. But like I was saying, Ezek's a hater. But I love them anyway. And shout out to Diablos then. But I was hearing, you know, I'm putting out the crew hand. And I actually, you know, you never know. I might have, you know, heard something here and there in the early <laughs> stages because I got it like that. But um, shout out to Zeus, my Zeus. boy, the killer. Zeus. But yeah. the new shit was dope, what I heard. And even that's my shit. And what I was glad about the, the crew hand shit is mad refreshing, dude. Because you know the deal. Because you're a writer yeah. and you're touring. And you've been yeah. touring. We know the lay of the land. Everybody's yeah. either sounding like one of our bands already. <laughs> or, or hey, Breed. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just what yeah, it yeah. is. Right, you know? Right. And, and, and it's good that Crew Hand was... I, I said it early on. I was like, you know, because I hear the Metallica. You know? Mm -hmm. And I know that's your shit also. But I was like, yeah, yeah. that's dope. I go, nobody's tapped into that thrash yet. Everybody's done the right. suicidal thrash. Everybody's done the, you know, no matter. And I was like, nobody got that yet. And they go, they yeah, did. Yeah. And then you got that, again, the groove shit that ain't mm -hmm. played out, typical, okay, let's, the breakdown is coming. You know, you guys got yeah. a flavor. And on the last run, the band is dope. The, last time I said it, too, the, you, you know the band got to be tight because, you know, you know how it is. You played, mm -hmm. 
and you play tight, you play in bands that are play tight, and you play live enough to know yeah. how the real motherfuckers do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> you know, and that's what you guys did. I gotta say, this last yeah. run with you guys, the band was fucking on Thank point. You. Thank you know, you. big Thank time, you. big time, big time. And I was like, yo, fuck. And again, the music come when you, the music could come off on record and come off live. That's the hard thing to do. And I think you did yeah. it with a bunch of those songs. Cool. cool, and, um, cool. Thank you. Why, so how did that happen? How you hook up with Jay? Because that's where I first heard of you guys doing it. Like Jay's putting it out. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's yeah. a dope combo. Like and then he goes, yeah, we're yeah. getting Zeus. I was like, oh, shit, it's on. <laughs> it's on. Uh, Cruel Hand had already taken, you know, we'd been on this two year hiatus already at that point. And, and, you know, I'm not worried about it. You know, Cruel Hand for a while was, was just yeah. more stress for me yeah. than it, than it was worth kind of yeah. like, I was never going to end it, but like, let's just give it a rest for a little bit, you know? Yeah. And uh, so just needed time away. And I remember on that, the, the terror hate breed obituary tour, we went into, we played Connecticut and Jay was there. And I know we met, I first met Jay on the outbreak days when he was singing in uh, his band, the distance. Yeah. And Shout so there was Jay, the best love you, so, Jay. Love you, Jay. So his connection right away back then we always, uh, you know, maintain a relationship and uh, saw him in Connecticut. He, and he had this idea starting this label and he wanted to know if we, if, if cruel hand would be interested in like, I'm like, wow, like, like he had faith in this band yeah. that I had all, I had like, I had already kind of like, just. Yeah. You are yeah. I witnessed its demise. I felt like I was like, and I was like, wow, he actually like, uh, sees some life left in this thing. And I'm like, all right. Like if you're into it and that means a lot, let's, let's go, let's do it. And he was willing to like, he wanted to fun the project yeah. and and go to zeus and yeah zeus was on the buck list for sure i'd never worked with him before you know i'd worked with a lot of a lot of different engineers and producers that i always wanted to and finally we got to the chance to sit in with zeus and and let him do his thing with the band and and he was and, amped with it because i know i know yeah. zeus and i know when when it came up and we were kind of I was like oh shit hard he was i know in, in our zoo me and zeus language I know he was psyched to do you guys, you know, yeah. you know, I know he was yeah. with it. And it was just a good vibe all around. We connected right away. And, and I finally got to hear like, you know, the music we were writing for a while at that point was, um, I thought it needed, you know, that extra, uh, like production quality. Yeah. Yeah. Your band needed that again. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of guitar work. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of riffage and, you know, yeah. with the vocals, there's a lot. That's yeah, the yeah. thing that you write, you know, you're vocalist and you're writing riffs. So there's intricate yeah. things going on and that style got to be clear. You know, there's a lot of, right, right. like I said, a la Metallica, where the guitar picking is very yeah. important in the riff itself. And that's what you guys got. And that's what it got to be. It got to be a crisp, you know, a clean recording, but not clean. But you know what I mean? Yeah, got to be yeah, heavy, yeah, but it got to yeah. be. That guitar work, you know, right? Uh, that definition and, yes. and some of that picking, and, the picking, and and, uh, and he also was reeling. I, you know, reeled us back in a little bit when the fantasy got gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got out of control. He was like, <laughs> uh, let's bring it back. You're a hardcore band, you know. Yeah, like, you're you're absolutely right. You're right. We're a fucking hardcore band. So, so he was great. Like like with that and and. Uh, yeah, fucking good, just great vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you did that. So you did that. Up and 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 um, what's the name of Jay's Static Records, right? His Static record Static Era Static, Static Era. Era Records. Yo, yeah. everybody, when you're going in through Connecticut, go make sure to go support Jay because I haven't been there yet. It looks dope, and he's selling. I heard you know he got vinyl, he got all types of shit, and that's dope. When you know, you know, one, I love vinyl, and especially somebody you know doing it. You know, Jay got a good, and that's what he, what I'm glad him grabbing you, he always had a pulse on the music. You know what I mean? He was always yeah. involved with music and always not just the gorilla shit. He always knew the other stuff, the stuff that yeah. people want to hear. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like the, the fucking that type of shit. So he, it's good that he heard something in you, which is dope because yeah, yeah. I, I personally too needed, you know, hardcore needed some something more refreshing. And there's a lot of refreshing shit coming out, but mm -hmm. 
I was glad it was it was you guys too, because it was a it's a strong record. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, thank you. And, thank and you. How, how many days you did with Zeus for that? I think we went over the est the uh, projected a, a lot a, a amount of time. You know, like uh, against Jay's wishes. Yeah, but, you know, but, but like, <laughs> well, artists, we, you know, we are artists and we're sensitive about yeah, our yeah. shit. So we're we sensitive. Do what we we do. Can, yeah, you know, I need, I need, we need time. So uh, I think, it, but, but Zeus is also, he's perfectionist too. So he wanted the best performances as well. And and I, I, I had to go back even. I went home. We thought it was done. We the went record back. sounds dope, dude. Really? I hear, I hear it. It's like, that shit sounds like, you know what I mean? It sounds yeah. like you put time in and, and you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's dope. You put time. You put time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't be happier with it. Like, oh, yeah. And fucking, and it was good. Like, and a, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit of a recap. We just did this weekend. You know, I forget mm -hmm. too that, you know, we just did the weekend. For us, like we said, it, you know, we've been together a while now. So to us, it's kind of old news playing shows. You know, for everybody else, it's kind of new. You know, yeah. we've been kind of, <laughs> we, we've been in the trenches already for a while. Right. But I mean, um, what how, what how does it feel being back you know you on stage go you know the whole sh even though you were already with us it was the same right, thing right. you were back before but now the next step it's being a, on stage and playing i needed that more we needed that more yeah. than we than we even yeah. thought we knew we're still yeah. still yeah. buzzing about it morale is high like yeah. and 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 the just the the shows were great people are hungry and ready for music and and so we're like feeding off that yeah and and we feel like we're the best version of the band we could be you know we had the we band had is dope i'm really mean it I, again i love saying it because i don't gotta say it because you're my brother and i love you and i gotta be like no nah, and i gotta say you're the the band was it's been dope but I, this last weekend i'm like man these motherfuckers been practicing you know yeah, like, yeah, not yeah. that you weren't but i'm like fuck the shit sounds big and tight mm -hmm. as fuck like yo i'm like don't stop, you know the deal. But um, right. you're right, man. The band is is at a good spot right now. Yeah, we're just feeling feeling good, and and uh, and it's and it's it's motivating us to just like let's 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 do some more stuff. Let when we can, you know. Yeah. Let's um, let's uh, even just from these shows, a lot of just online chatter and like like opportunities like already, yeah. you know, because oh, like yeah. you know the kids are gonna go where the shows are happening that shows aren't happening everywhere and so where they're happening they will go and and when and uh people who know you know who are involved like with booking and and just like business stuff like they're seeing the bands who are out there and wanting to be active yeah. and yeah. so the, these opportunities are coming and it's like we just want to keep the momentum going now, absolutely you know? and so yeah, the yeah. same thing with us you know we're doing that obviously not just because we need fucking work and we don't want to start robbing banks, <laughs> but the fucking scene needed this fucking um, what do you call it? That 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 thing for you, the respirator thing for your heart because I think a lot of motherfuckers are starting to lose what the shit was about, and we yeah. also saw a lot of people did forget what it's about. But that's whatever. We're not yeah. about that negative shit. We already over that. We've been there. Right. Everything's open. Everybody can play right, the shows right. now. Everybody <laughs> now it's cool. Full fight is this? All right, cool. Misfits five hundred dollars. Whatever. Um, but, um, no, it's dope that, um, again, like, you know, whenever we are able to play, it's good that we're able to do, you know, my whole shit is not just for, for work. Like we were saying, it's like, this keeps our world alive. You know, this yeah, yeah. thing of ours, this is our shit. This is our fucking, you know, this is our world. And I'm just saying the hours, yours, my, everybody listening to this, anybody yeah. who knows what any of us are about, this is your shit too. And mm -hmm. I'm like, this is the time we got to pump life in it. Yeah. Very For fucking sure. important. You know what I mean? You may not like yeah. this, this, with this, that. We got to pump life in this shit before it dies. Yeah, People yeah. forget about that. But this is already something that we get no love from mainstream. You know what right. I mean? And, and that's all good. That's all good. One day they're going to fucking recognize. But we're not going <laughs> to let ourselves die. That's why we no. had to play the, those shows. Not just us. you and, and all these other shows that are popping up. They need yeah. it. They're fucking yeah. needed. So I'm glad. You know, shout out to especially... Everybody in the West Coast doing it. Everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. Crazy. And, 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 and I'm seeing also um, Terra got some shit. So you're going to be doing some yeah. Terra shit is getting planned. What's what's the yeah, word? Yeah, yeah. Word on that. Three weeks, I believe, in September, out uh, starting the West Coast, out east, ending at uh, Furnace Fest. 
in uh, I think that's Alabama. I yeah, think? that's Alabama. We Alabama. played there. It's, a, it's like a fucking uh, one of America's most haunted places. We went Ooh. through there in the middle of the night. It's dope. We scared the shit out of each other, but it's fucking <laughs> it was amazing. You know, banger. Banger, yeah. banger, is, is dude. Is it a hard to banger, man? Yeah. Shout out to everybody yeah. in banger. Yeah. <laughs> and fucking um um, but oh yeah, so you got a couple of weeks there, and yeah. um, what's the deal? Any any word on any new music? Anything you could talk about? Yeah, yeah, and some new music coming too. Uh, Todd Jones, the OG terror guitarist, songwriter. Uh, yep. Uh, he nails he's producing. Yeah, yeah, nails like, and he's back in the mix. Uh -huh. doing his thing with the band and and uh so it's gonna have that that a little bit of that todd jones flavor for sure got you got you and yeah, um yeah, yeah. and is gonna have shout out to todd jones he's dope mm -hmm. and it, it, have you are you writing it is it gonna have some fucking chris link flavor that's what i want to yeah. know oh yeah, you, we know, can, you know you know you through the shit. pandemic submitting a lot of sending back and forth riffs and stuff so that's what i like to hear, hear. we gotta keep the flavor gang we gotta keep the yeah. flavor gang high us 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 this colored people gotta keep that's right you know, this is what we bring to the table we, do. we you know you're welcome white people in hardcore <laughs> you can thank the flavor to us you know the rest of the militant part that's for you guys we that's bring right. the flavor part <laughs> But fuck it, no, but that's good, but that's good. Thank you, Chris. I'm glad you were able to do this. You know, I said um, you were going to be on. We, I had you on my list a while, but I said they made it a point where, like, yo, let's do the recap from this weekend. And I said, yeah, you know, what better time? And again, I was like, I've been on a little bit of a crew hand high myself. Like I said, so yeah. I said I wanted to get it. But, yo, where could everybody follow you? And what's the deal real quick? Give them your handles right now. Follow my personal Instagram at Chris Link, uh, follow the Cruel Hand Instagram at Cruel Hand HC. Uh, follow the Terror Instagram at Terror Hardcore. That's it. And and you can catch him on P Hub on Grinder. Nah, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, yeah, got yo. But listen, hmm. again, yo, one love, my brother. I'm glad you were able to do it. I love you, bro. Yo, shout out to everybody. Shout love out to you. Cruel Hand. Go go go. Follow him. Go get that new record. Uh, on fucking check out on um, um, Jay Reason and fucking Static Era Records. Static Go Air cop Record. that cop that record on that and all that good shit. Everybody smoking word. We out. Yo, Stu, this one's for you. This one's for you, baby. <laughs>